Hi, my name is Emily Hoover, and I'm here today at the beautiful Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas, to help you explore Harriet Frischmuth's Roses of Yesterday. Standing at 5 feet 5 inches, Frischmuth's statue is a life-size bronze. The statue was originally painted Frischmuth Green, a light gray-green color she was meticulous about and used for many of her statues, but all of this paint has long since worn away. Roses of Yesterday was modeled in 1923 when Frischmuth was commissioned by Madeline Walden of Hackenstack, New Jersey to create a memorial for her late husband's gravesite. Frischmuth was often commissioned to sculpt memorials, and sundials, like Roses of Yesterday, were a specialty. Frischmuth herself described Roses of Yesterday as her best sundial originally designed in 1923 as a memorial to Mr. Walden, a great lover of children and flowers, the gnomon on the sundial as a butterfly symbolizing the fleeting hours. The sundial as a whole represents the constant passage of time. You can see the lines cut into the bronze and the inscription Perennis Amor, which translates to endless love. The sundial both states the time and simultaneously declares it to be unimportant in the face of emotion. Practical as well as aesthetic, this statue will always be able to give the viewer the time of day. The girl's right hand holds a bouquet of roses, symbolizing the transitory nature of life. She is wearing sandals with a loosely flowing gown and lightly curled hair. For me, this statue's beauty is in its seeming simplicity, nature personified. The girl appears almost to be a wood nymph type creature, smelling flowers, watching for the movement of the sun, her dress swaying in the breeze. There is a peacefulness about the work. There is no tension within the sculpture. Frischmuth is using this simplicity to help the reader identify with nature through the girl's identification with the same. Frischmuth's use of contrapposto allows the girl to bow slightly back and bring the flowers to her face. This adds more movement to the piece, as the girl holds her weight slightly into the wind that is simultaneously blowing her dress behind. The statue, as you can see, is made up of long, smooth lines with waves in the roses and girl's hair. This adds the harmonious feeling of the piece, no rough edges to catch on. Frischmuth is allowing us to feel a calm acceptance of the future, and of death as a continuation rather than an end. Though Frischmuth's work was completed in the modernist period, you can see from the statue that she did not necessarily take part in the movement. In fact, she criticized the movement openly, calling modern art spiritless and its creators lazy. This likely was a large part why Frischmuth's art retained so many classical elements. If we contrast Moray's oil painting, Jeanne, with Roses of Yesterday for a moment, the parallels are striking, as are the differences. Both artists created a lens through which their subject can be viewed, and, in fact, both subjects are women, likely young, who are hunched slightly forward. However, the curvilinear form of Roses of Yesterday provides an image of youth and acceptance of the natural world, while the stark coloration and details such as the facial expression and cigarette of Jeanne provide an image of suspicion, unhappiness, and a willingness to confront anything and everything. Christmas girl is uninterested in the viewer. Her focus is on the flower she holds. Contrastingly, Murray's woman is looking directly at the viewer with a haggard and suspicious expression that is certainly not inviting. Frischmuth is attempting to draw the viewer into her statue and, by extension, nature, to force an acceptance of death. Murray is purposely repelling the viewer make, to make the point that society has lost its genuineness. Gien is another example of art in the modernist era, but Murray was also taking a more traditional approach. In fact, Moray would later go on to become a modernist, but at this point, early in his career, he was a realist. Moray uses tenebrism to frame his subject. The dark black around her white dress creates an image in which she stands out starkly. This drama is continued in the lady's face, which is pulled into a suspicious grimace. Frischmuth idealized her subject. Moray, and modernist also working in this time period, did not. Ultimately, Roses of Yesterday is a sculpture designed to mourn those already gone and remind those left that life is a very temporary state of being. Its power comes from that complex meaning, wrapped up neatly in a simple image. I personally was captivated by this statue because of its size. It stands at eye level with the viewer, appearing no more or less important than any one individual.
I love that the statue is incredibly detailed. Each individual flower is apparent, and I've always been a sucker for flowers. My favorite season is fall, and to me this statue is a clear representation of the seasonal change fall represents between the summer of one's life and the winter. It is an absolutely gorgeous statue. Harriet Frischmuth's Roses of Yesterday was my favorite piece of art on display in Crystal Bridges. I hope that I have managed to convince you it's a piece worth a second look.